tribunal judges. Here are 23 evidences we will use to give judgment on 6 September. Tinibu shocked. Hello people, welcome back once again to my YouTube channel. You know, in this particular video, I'm going to reveal to you all the 23 evidences that this election petition tribunal judges and the questions and everything that they are going to ask in order to de determine as a matter of fact if Tinibu is imminently qualified or probably he will be disqualified and never, you know, banned from even contesting or vying for any presidential position. And if the election results and everything will be cancelled and notified and invalidated. I'm going to review the 23 questions. And this is what actually took them so long because they need to do a thorough check and a whole lot of investigations about these 23 good questions and evidences that have been brought before them. I'm going to review, I'm going to gradually put you through so you understand what is happening and how these people are going to give their judgment. From the 23 questions, you that is actually viewing this particular video will know the possible outcome of that particular uh, judgment, final judgment that, that will come up on Wednesday being on the 6th of September. Well, before we dive into the close of, close of this particular matter, please, if this is your first time of visiting this channel, please do want to click on the notification button so I get notified whenever I drop a new and important update like this. Now, let's head back straight to the point. Now, the number one question, as a matter of fact, this election petition tribunal judges, led by uh, Justice Samani, is going to determine is number one is execution is whether for feature is 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 same thing as a fine. As we all know, Tinibu forfeited four hundred sixty thousand US dollars to the United States government after uh, he, he was discovered uh, after it was discovered that the uh, proceeds from heroin trafficking and drug trafficking and the proceeds we are found in his own accounts, in his heritage bank account and other accounts, he had to forfeit four hundred sixty thousand US dollars. Now, Tinibu's lawyer, as we all know, was claiming that forfeiture is a civil, this thing is that is not a criminal offense, as a matter of fact, and it is not even a fine, that, that is not even a, a crime, or it is not even a fine, because according to the Constitution of Nigeria, any person, as a matter of fact, that has been fined for any offense, that has been fined for any offense or any, any crime is not worth, you know, being the president of this particular country. So the tribunal, as a matter of fact, is determining whether forfeiture is the same thing as a fine. Now, the second thing is, if forfeiture is a fine, if at the end of the day they've established that forfeiture is a fine, whether Tinibu was liable for that fine for dishonesty because he was fined for 460,000. And the, the constitution said that if, if anybody has been fined for dishonesty or for any any other act in whatsoever name, should not, as a matter of fact, uh, vie for the presidential position, being the number one position in this particular country. Now, the third question here is whether the order by a court in USA is conclusive. That is, that is. Such judgment is enforceable in wholly in Nigeria. Now, what this trying, to, what this part, what this third part is trying to say is, if the judgment given by that Chicago uh, Illinois court about uh, Tinibu's for future of 46,000 is, you know, uh, enforceable in this country, if you could recall, Tinibu's lawyer Wole Onanipeku was arguing that uh, that the court, as a matter of fact, should throw away that for that that uh, for future uh, issue because it did, it wasn't a court in Nigeria that gave that order, and as a matter of fact, that it is not enforceable in Nigeria. You could imagine. Meanwhile, the court, the court, the constitution of Nigeria. Said that if anybody has been fined by any competent court of jurisdiction, he did, he did not say within this country alone, but Tinibu's lawyer is trying to, uh, to twist, the, twist it. Now, this election petition tribunal court uh, lawyers will not determine if such judgment is enforceable in wholly in Nigeria. Now, the next thing here is the fourth one is whether they said fine contravenes section 137 1D of the constitution, which is a part that you know, speaks about uh, a candidate that has been fined before, whether he is fit or not to contest for the presidential position. Now, the fifth question here is whether they said fine would be considered under Section 137 IE of the Constitution of Nigeria. This is the same part, uh, this is the same section of the Constitution that equally speaks about uh, the in 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 ineligibility of some candidates to contest for the presidential position. Now, the sixth one is whether Shitima knowingly allowed himself to be nominated as a candidate for the office of VP and Senate at the same time. In OPTOB, be an article of back equally to. Uh, uh, the case of double nomination of Shetima. We are right. Shetima was nominated as a senator. He was still nominated as a senator. Why he allowed himself to be nominated as the uh, vice presidential uh, or running mate to uh, 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 Bola Ahmed Tinibu. So this is the sixth question or the sixth evidence that this particular uh, tribunal must actually un unravel. Now the seventh one is whether upon the resignation of Masari, that is the placeholder for uh, Tinibu. You know, Tinibu first of all chose the placeholder in the person of Masari as the VP for Tinibu or Tinibus like APC, failed to nominate and forward to INEC a replacement within the 14 days. This is the case of invalid nomination. 
Now, whether Peter B is a member and uh, a member and was validly sponsored by Labour Party as presidential candidate, I told you guys that Atiku uh, uh, Tinibu is claiming that Peter B's name was not in the Labour Party register. So for, for for that reason, he's not a member of Labour Party and he could he shouldn't have contested. But this is just a lie. The Supreme Court have said it, that the Labour Party has the right to say who is who is and who is not their member. And Labour Party has stated it categorically that Peter B is their member. Now the ninth question is whether the Electoral Act and INEC regulations made it mandatory the transmission of results on from ECHA onto the IREF and collation system at the polling unit, whether the, you know, the electoral act is made it mandatory for the uh, INEC to you know, uh, transmit election results from the polling unit to the IREF portal. Now, the tenth question is whether collation at the world level can proceed without ascertaining the accredi accreditation number on the hard copy of from ECHA with the accreditation uh, displayed on the physical beaver's machine. You know, before the collation of results, instead of INEC to you know compare the, the the total number of people that voted in the from ECHA with the total number of people that was accredited, INEC did not do it. They went on to collate results and illegally announced him as the president. Now the eleventh question is whether collation at the world level can proceed without ascertaining the votes caused by political parties on the hard from ECHA with the with that in the uploaded copy of ECHA on the INEC. You know this part of this part is trying to say that INEC is supposed to validate or verify the results. The the physical from ECHA they, they are supposed to correspond and you know look at the ones that each polling unit agent uploaded onto the IRF portal, but the INEC did not do it. If you all could remember till now, INEC is still uploading results to the IRF portal. Now the twelfth is whether the INEC had, had copy results on form ECHA must be a mirror copy of the form ECHA scanned by beavers and uploaded onto the IRF. Now this part is trying to say that that whether they are from physical form ECHA that INEC has at the collection centers, they must be the same and reflect the same thing that was now that, that is in the IRF portal. Now, the 13th one is whether results not ascertained by the uploaded copy is invalid. Whether results not ascertained by the uploaded copy is invalid. That is, whether the physical from ECA, which uh, this Mahmoud, the criminal, the Mahmoud Yakubu did, he used uh, physical uh, from ECA, which, which were manipulated by state governors and other corrupt politicians to announce the name. He never checked the ones that were uploaded onto the IREF. So, this particular part is saying that if, 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 if whether they if whether results not ascertained by the uploaded copy is invalid. Now, the 14th one is whether the certified through results uploaded onto the IRF but, but only there will be considered invalid. I told you guys that that half of or more than half of the results uploaded onto the IRF portal is unreadable and is a uh, 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 is a uh, blurry. So whether INEC should or uh, whether the election position tribunal judge should consider this as uh, invalid. Now, the 15th one is whether the CTC certified through copies of original resource sheets that are already there will be considered invalid. I've said this, this is part of the 15th. Now, the 16th one is whether INEC is at liberty to upload unverified or unreadable results onto the IREF to be viewed by the Nigerian public. It's a very important question. Since INEC intentionally uploaded blood and unreadable documents, whether it is allowed. Now, the 17th one is whether invalid results be counted according to Section 51, um, Part 2 of the Electoral Act. Of course, invalid results should, as a matter of fact, be cancelled. This is my own opinion. Now, 18, whether there are polling units we are overvoting or court, this is another part that the election professional tribunal judges will actually determine. Whether the combined failure to upload results from the polling units on readable from ECHA results and instances of overvoting be adjudged as substantial non-compliance with the electoral act. Then the 20th one said whether the combined uh, 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 one of the combined affected effect of instances of overvoting over, over and unreadable results would have probably brought about a different outcome of the election. Of course, it will. Whether INEC knowingly neglected to upload the results at the polling unit, this is what another angle and another question the election president tribunal judges will have to answer. Then, 22 is whether INEC knowingly neglected to ascertain the political party's results with the results uploaded onto the IRF during the coalition process. Then, the last one is, the, the last but not the least, is whether FCT Abuja is considered as one is considered as one of the states of the federation for the purpose of presidential election. Then the last one is whether the provisions of the constitution mandate that the person with the plurality of or majority of votes also score twenty five percent in F FCT in Abuja, in addition to securing twenty five percent in at least to twenty four of the thirty six states of the federation. So these are the uh, important evidences and questions that these uh, election petition tribunal judges need to answer. Well, we'll see how they actually answer this particular question on Wednesday.